Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Analog Basement. I mean, Digital Basement. Today's video, we're gonna be trying to fix this IBM 9-inch VGA monitor. So, without further ado, let's get right to it. This IBM 9-inch monochrome VGA monitor is incredibly cute. Just look at the design of this thing. It's the usual chunky design of the PS2 era, but yet with a little tiny monitor. This monitor was donated to the channel by local viewer David, and as I said, it has a fault where he says that it doesn't actually power on any longer. Now, I haven't even attempted to power this on myself. I want to just take a quick look at it before we do so but I do trust him that it is not working, so it'll be interesting to see if I can get this thing fixed. So on the back of the monitor, we see the label here. It's uh, IBM Type 4707, part number 09F2005. And we have a manufacture date of January 1989. And right here, notice it says manufactured for IBM Corporation. So this is an OEM type monitor manufactured in Korea. On the back of the monitor, we have the mains input there for power and the VGA cable, which is fixed. And there are a lot less than the normal amount of pins in there because this is only gonna be using the green signal coming from your VGA card. The monitor has the usual really good IBM build quality though, with of course a little tilt swivel stand built in. The front of the monitor on the bottom has the usual power switch here and then the brightness and the contrast controls as is typical for PS2 style monitors. You notice the blue coloring there of those knobs. I'm gonna be guessing that most likely this monitor was gonna be used with point of sale machines or cash registers made by IBM, because I'm not really sure that they targeted nine inch CRTs at people who were buying PS2 computers. Although maybe there were specific use cases like in a call center where there was a very small workstation and the computer was mounted off to the side or under the desk, where this was sitting on the top of the desk with perhaps the little uh, small size Model M keyboard, maybe for like airline reservation counter or hotel check-in, things like that. I'd be super curious to know if anyone ever saw one of these monitors being used outside of a cash register use case. Looking closely at the CRT, I do see a little bit of burn in. There's a line here and a little bit of text like it might say run and a few words there that are burned in, but it is minor, all things considered. I don't see any burning on the top, and luckily white phosphor screens like this will surely be are pretty resistant to overall fading. I found their, their longevity and lifespan to be pretty decent. Okay, so for troubleshooting, the first step is we need to power this thing on hooked up to a bench PC that I know works for a good test. And a really good top tip is good to use something like a kilowatt when you do this, because you want to know if the monitor is taking any power at all, or if it just reads zero watts when I turn it on, it could really indicate that it has a blown fuse, which probably indicates that something has shorted out inside one of the semiconductors. And I think I have this position where you can see it. So one thing that's really weird is it actually reads one watt right now while the monitor is in the off position here. So I just powered up the bench PC. Let's hit the power switch here. All right, we got 17 watts, seven watts. Okay, well, seven watts definitely is not enough for a monitor. It's interesting that it actually did run at 17 for a second, 14, and then it immediately shuts down. Let me turn these brightness contrast knobs a little bit here. Yep, it just uh, seems to run and then drops right down to six watts. So definitely doesn't have a bad fuse. And it's interesting that it runs and then shuts down. So, okay, well, it's definitely not working, um, no picture. So let me open this thing up. It's very common with IBM monitors that you need to get the tilt stand off before you can get the rest of the case off. So it looks like there's a couple clips you push in here and then this probably slides back like that and then lifts off. We got the good old IBM warning sticker here, 550 volts, do not open this cover, trained service personnel only. I'm surprised the warning here is only for 550 volts because almost certainly the CRT when it's working and operating is gonna be around 10,000 volts. But I would imagine that maybe there's a 550 volt rail that comes off of the secondary on the flyback transformer when everything is working. Not knowing exactly which screws to remove, I'm just gonna take out all the screws that I see. 
I will add too, I forgot to mention this. When I first tested this, I had it hooked up to a PC outputting a valid VGA signal because on some of these monitors, imagine the power saving feature on more modern monitors. The monitor often won't run without an actual input signal. And it's quite possible that this monitor works in a similar fashion to that. So I wanted to make sure I had a known good signal coming into the monitor. Uh, that way it had the best chance of actually starting up. All right, so that released the cover and I just have to feed the VGA cable through the back cover. I'm just taking a quick peek inside the back cover here and I do not see any labels or anything to give us any clues to uh, maybe the voltages this thing runs at. All right, look at this over engineering here. Tons of metal, really strong. Oh, there it is. 14 kilovolts right here on the CRT. So that's what the high voltage runs at, which is right down there. This is a transformer here that is almost certainly part of the power supply for this monitor. So it goes without saying, the first thing I have to do is just take off all the covers here. And this is probably the power supply, this whole unit here with this large transformer. So I'm gonna start on this side by taking all these screws off. And the power supply is out. Now, almost certainly this red and black wire here is the DC output from the power supply to the board. It's the B plus voltage. And then this twisted black wire here, this will be the mains input coming in from the power socket here, or probably the power switch on the front that is. So let's get that out of the board so we can take a look at this. With the power supply out, we get our first look inside the monitor here. So it's clearly made by Orion, which I don't know if that's a manufacturer of the entire monitor, but at least they manufactured the CRT. I'm looking around on the PCB, trying to see if I can see anything about the manufacturer, which I cannot. And I'm also taking a look around to see if I can see anything about B plus voltage. And I can't necessarily see that. There is something right here that says 15 volts. It's next to the fuse there. That may indicate the B plus. That does seem a little bit high. I would imagine B plus is more like 12 volts on a monitor like this. It would be very helpful to know the voltage that this power supply puts out because if I did, I would just hook up my bench power supply to that DC input jack and we could test to make sure this monitor works. It's quite possible that the problem exists within this part of the monitor and not on the power supply board and the power supply maybe tries to run the monitor and then shuts down when it figures out that there's a problem. Here's a really crude diagram of the CRT that's in here and I wanted to illustrate where the mounting tabs are. So this thing with the crosshatch is the implosion band that's on every CRT and the mounting ears are usually welded onto the implosion band but they can either be at the front or the back or somewhere else or they might not exist at all and that uses a, a clamping mechanism. This CRT uses mounting tabs or ears that are near the front of the glass. So if you ever need to replace this CRT, uh, that's what you're gonna need to look for. This is a CRT from a Macintosh and it has exactly what I'm talking about. The mounting tabs here are also towards the front of the glass. So I think there's a good chance if this connector here is the same on the neck board here, which I'm looking at the number of pins, it looks like it is. So I'm gonna almost certainly say that these two CRTs are interchangeable, meaning if this one's very worn out, I can take one out of a Mac that had the battery explode inside and sort of destroyed the rest of the computer. If the CRT is still good, I can hopefully swap that in and use that in this monitor or vice versa. If the rest of this thing is, is beyond repair, I can always take this CRT and use it in Macintosh. So I decided to do some Googling to see if I could find any service documentation for this monitor, maybe schematics, anything like that. And unfortunately, I've been very unlucky to find anything. Here is a little bit of information about this particular monitor here, IBM 4707. Although this stipulates model 001 or E01. And looking on the back here, other than the part number here, I don't really see anything that might be a model number. Anyhow, the 4707, at least the model 001 and E01, supports all these different resolutions. So obviously 640 480 goes without saying, and 720 by 400, this is the text mode on all PCs. But the E01 monitor also supports 800 by 600. There is also 720 by 350 support, which is used for EGA mode. If you have this hooked up to a VGA card and you're displaying an EGA mode, it will switch into a 350 line mode. Notice down here it says industrial for the product family. So I'm gonna be assuming that this monitor, yeah, was for industrial purposes and not for general consumers to buy. 
And it says here that there is EPA Energy Star certification on the E01 model. So that's gonna lead me to believe that the model 001 is probably this monitor here, the very first edition from 1989. There was no Energy Star certification when this monitor came out. So this one probably only supports 640 by 480 and not the 800 by 600 as well. And that's it. And unfortunately, no schematics or even a SAMS PhotoFax was forthcoming for this monitor. So as usual, if any of my viewers are aware of anywhere where I can find those for this, I would love to know about that. But without those, let's just keep opening things up, see if I can find the fault. All right, so this power supply is most likely gonna be the fault. So let's break into this thing and see what I can figure out. All right, here's our first look at the complete board. So we have the mains input right here, and then there are four discrete rectifiers. So that's the bridge rectification. And that goes into this large filtering cap, which is actually Daewoo brand. So I wonder if this is a Daewoo monitor, probably is. And then this part is probably some type of a feedback uh, linear regulator where it basically bleeds off the extra current through this IC here, which looks like it's got seven pins that was attached to that large heat sink. So what it's gonna do is there's a little potentiometer right here. And anytime the voltage goes above a th set threshold set by that potentiometer, it's gonna bleed off that extra current into this, which will regulate the voltage. I'm really not super familiar with this type of power supply design, and I'm really tempted to just try to power this thing up as it is right here with no load on this. Although sometimes these types of supplies don't like having no load, and you can actually risk damage in here due to over voltage. So that might not be the smartest idea. So probably the best thing I can do first is use my multimeter and let's just test all the semiconductors on here looking for any kind of shorts. So I'm putting the multimeter here on diode check, which if there is a short and you hold the leads together, you get a beep. And when I flip this over, there are markings on here to show what all the various components are. So we can do diode check on the various diodes. I think that one is actually not populated. Yeah, it's not there, but this one is. So there it is on the multimeter. We're getting a normal diode drop on that one. Now, when the diodes are in circuit, you're not always gonna get accurate readings because there might be parallel to resistors or capacitors, things like that. But what we're trying to find is anything that actually has a dead short. So there we're getting 0.427 and this way, yeah, 1.68 and it's going up. So that's hooked up to a capacitor, obviously. And I can see right here that it is actually parallel to the IC right here. So we're gonna have to look at the data sheet to that in a second. Let's just check the bridge rectifier here. So there we go, 0 0.54 there, 0 0.54 there. That diode is 0.54, so it's fine. And 0 0.54 there, so no short. And when you look at this board, there aren't any other diodes or semiconductors on here except for this one IC. And there it is, there's that IC. So it's a 2.5 amp power switching regulator. 5.1 to 40 volt output voltage range. And when we look at the block diagram, it's really simplifying a lot of things here. So we have the voltage input here and the voltage output is over here. There is one inductor, a diode. We have some capacitors around it and it looks like one resistor. So it's a very simple design. Here are the pins on this thing. So pin one is the supply voltage, which is coming from this transformer through the bridge rectifier and this capacitor. We have the feedback input, which is connected to the potentiometer there. Looks like if you just connect the output right back to the input, you get 5.1 volts on this thing. But if you add a voltage divider, then that's how you can get higher voltages out of it. And then these other pins are for operation of this thing and then the output voltage. It does seem like this IC actually has short circuit protection. So I'm wondering if those turn on characteristics of what we were seeing where the current would ramp up and then shut off was something to do with a short in the monitor that was actually going into protection mode on this little power supply. Now, taking a look at this page here, it gives you various resistor values for different output voltages on here. So I think with a little reverse engineering, I should be able to figure out what the resistor values are on here with that potentiometer to figure out what this should be outputting to see if I can then power that monitor directly with the bench supply. All right, a little reverse engineering and it's really a terrible diagram. I do apologize to that. The way the pin to feedback pin works is you put a voltage divider going between the B plus, which is the output from the IC and ground. And this thing has actually one resistor to B plus and one resistor plus a variable resistor to ground. And when you add up the resistance values of these, and I did lift these two resistors so I could measure them accurately, we get 4.94K to ground total, including the variable resistor, and we get 9.87K to B+, which is around 10K. 
If we look over here on the data sheet, here is R3 and R4. R3 is right here to ground, 4.7K, and R4 is the one that goes to the voltage output, which is the B+. It's going to be about 15 volts, it's going to be slightly higher, looking at the ratios right here between the two resistors, so maybe 15.2 volts or thereabouts. Looking at closely at this power supply, other than the main IC, which might be having a problem, or the Schottky diode here, everything else here, I really don't see how this could stop working. Maybe if these capacitors had horribly leaked and gone bad, possibly, or one of these inductors or resistors is open, but the fact is it starts to actually regulate, or it seems like it, because we're getting some current draw, and then it drops down back to nothing. So, I don't know. I'm, so with the fact I figured out that this should output around 15 volts, I think I'm just gonna power the monitor off the bench supply. Let's see what happens. All right, I have two clip leads here connected onto the DC input on the main board. And just to double check that the negative here is ground. It does have continuity to the chassis. It's less than an ohm. So I know that that is definitely the negative rail. And here is my linear bench power supply. I'm gonna switch this over to, I don't know, 500 milliamps or maybe one amp. Let's start at one amp and let's see what this thing is able to do when it comes to the monitor. It might go into current regulation mode, but let's give it a try. Okay, the bench PC is powered up and the monitor is connected to it. The power switch on the front here, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna reach up and I'm gonna turn on the power supply. Here we go. All right, we're getting 300 milliamps, 15 volts. That seems too low, to be honest. Not getting any life out of the monitor at all. I shut the power off. If I turn it back on again, it just goes immediately to about 300 milliamps. It actually goes into current regulation ever so quickly and then drops out again. So I'm gonna say that pretty much clinches it, that the problem does not exist on the power supply board and it is definitely something in the monitor here. I have all the lights on in here, so I really can't see if there's any filament voltage getting to the CRT. So I'm just gonna turn the power supply back on here. And there we have the filament voltage is 11.7 volts. So the filament should be glowing on the CRT. And typical is around 12 volts for a CRT like that. Although that is a completely acceptable filament voltage for a nine inch CRT like this. And just like that, the monitor is completely apart. I actually put the power supply back together because I really think that this just totally works and that the problem must lie here in the monitor. 310 milliamp or so at 15 volts means that not a whole lot is going on in this monitor. It should definitely draw more current than that. So I took this apart and it wasn't very hard. I just sort of took all the screws out and it all sort of came apart like this. And I started looking for potential issues. And I think I found at least one. Now this PCB down here takes the video signal that comes from the VGA cable right here, and it actually outputs it through this black wire to the neck board, and that actually drives the cathode directly. They try to make the path between the VGA cable and the CRT as short as possible for the best possible picture quality. Now looking at the neck board, you'll notice that it's got this brown gunk on it here, like between this transistor and this capacitor. And also this black wire here is the video signal cable. The black part here is a ground, and this white part is actually the video signal. Take a look at this. That is actually not connected anymore. Now this brown gunk was put all over the board right here, probably as some kind of a strain relief. What can happen is this brown gunk can start to become very corrosive, at least to uh, metal. So I have a feeling what happened is it just sort of ate away at this wire here, until it actually broke free. So I'm definitely gonna need to fix that before this monitor can possibly work. But this is definitely not the fault that was keeping the monitor from turning on. And if the monitor actually worked, this would just result in a black or maybe an entirely white screen. But this monitor is not working at all. It's actually not generating any high voltage. So it's not possible for an image to even show up on the screen. Now looking down here at this board, this black wire here is the video cable. And look at this. The wire's broken on this end as well. And just the same, it has this brown sort of strain relief gunk on it and it's corroded the wire completely and it came right off the board. So I don't think there's gonna be too much trouble. We can fix this wire and we'll get a video signal back to the neck board. But I'm noticing that this brown gunk is actually all over the place. Like it's right here on the CRT as well, mostly seemingly holding the neck in place. 
But what does have me worried is that on this board here, the one with the flyback, there's that brown gunk all over the place on this. Now here is an example of that. And notice this resistor here is partially coated in this brown stuff. And notice the color. It's sort of a lighter brown right here where I don't think it's causing any corrosion. But right around this resistor, it sort of becomes a darker color. And then here's another example. Look, there's some of this brown stuff on top of this transistor here. And look, you can see green corrosion that's actually forming right there before our eyes. So that has me really quite worried that some of this compound has actually corroded some of the components on the main board here, and that will just prevent it from actually working entirely. So I think my next step is to start inspecting this board and marking off all the components that are covered in this brown gunk, and then start to measure those values if I can tell what they are, and see if they're still connected and working properly. So I just started my inspection, and take a look at this. There's a resistor there, which has quite a bit of green gunk on it. I've already scratched the brown stuff away, and another one right up there with a similar amount of green corrosion. So I'm gonna pick away at this, try to expose everything, and then I'm gonna measure to make sure that those are still connected. The most annoying thing about this is they obviously apply that stuff there to hold the capacitor down and into place. It's not necessarily supposed to be on top of the leads of those resistors. It's just that they happen to be close to it, and they're sort of, I don't know, collateral damage. Is that the right expression? Okay, the multimeter's here set to measure DC volts. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to measure where the B plus voltage is going on the board because some of it goes through the resistors that had that corrosion on it. All right, so B plus is on to the monitor right now. And if I measure right here, and there it is, that's just connected directly to the bench power supply. It goes right here to a junction point or a jumper that makes its way over to this connector where it says 15 volts. This is a wire connection that goes, I think, to the other PCB that is currently connected to the VGA cable. And I did check the 74LS chip that was on that board and it is getting five volts. So that is getting power properly. But if we go over here to here, there's a jumper. So we still have 14 volts. And then we go to an inductor right here and that's 14 volts. And we go down here to this side and we're getting 14.6, so that's working. And then we go here to this side of the resistor uh, that had a lot of corrosion on it, we got 14.6. When we go to this side, we're getting 0 0.06 volts. Now, this resistor is a 470 ohm resistor, and I really don't think that it should be dropping basically everything. That just doesn't seem quite right. So everything that's to the right of this resistor has no power, which is a capacitor there, and also an IC that almost certainly is used for driving the monitor. So this part of the board has no power. I think it's because of this resistor here. Now, right down here on pin one on the flyback also should have 14.5 volts or thereabouts. And we're getting 14.2, that's correct. It's going through a diode. So there's a diode drop happening. And that is going through that inductor that was right there, right before the resistor, that seems bad. So I cut the power and I'm gonna remove this 470 ohm resistor and I'm gonna replace it. Here it is, this is the resistor. And let's see. Well, it's certainly measuring okay. So it does say 460 ohms. Uh, I'm gonna still replace it. I just don't trust it. It just looks bad because of that corroded leg there. Okay, the new resistor is in, but I didn't even power it up yet because since when I pulled that out, it still tested good. It's kind of telling me one thing. It's telling me that over on this side, there must be a short to ground. And that's because, like I said, B plus comes down here. There's an inductor that goes off to the flyback through this resistor. There's a capacitor right here. And when I was powering this board and I measured this was about, you know, 0 0.06 volts. And then it goes down here through another cap. It's uh, some kind of like a disc capacitor, most likely. And then into this pin on the IC here, there is also a resistor to over there and another resistor over there. Okay, so I have multimeter hooked up to ground, which is the same as this pin right here. And if we follow over here, this is the other side of the cap that is on the B plus past that resistor. And if I look on the positive side, we also have continuity. So all of the power rail on this side through this resistor is grounded. And that is definitely gonna make it look like this side 
of the resistor is dead. So that was definitely drawing a lot of current. It's like a dead short through that resistor. Now it goes through here over to this pin on the IC and that is, that is shorted to ground. And on that shorted lead over here, there is a resistor, uh, seven or eight K or so, so that's fine. And then there's another resistor here, uh, 8.1 K that goes off to some other stuff. But this lead right here on this IC is very slow, two ohms. Yeah, well, and that's just because the test leads I'm using aren't very good. I have these uh, really old clip leads connected here that cause extra resistance. So I think this IC is dead. So I'm gonna get the desolder now. I'm gonna remove this IC out of the board entirely. And uh, let's take a look at it. There it is, a Hitachi HA11235, or is it an 8L4? It's an interesting package. It's got two less pins on it. So obviously this is designed for some type of CRT application that came out of the board quite easily. Now, an interesting test would be if I obviously measure on here now with the multimeter with this chip removed, then obviously between the IC pin here and ground, we should not be getting a short any longer. And if you can believe it, I still am getting a short there. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. What exactly is causing that to be shorted if it's not this IC? Okay, so what can be left that could be causing a short? So the chip is out, so we know it's not that. So we're getting a short from this pin here, which should be B plus to ground. The only thing that goes between this B plus rail and ground is this electrolytic cap here, and then this cap here, that's it. The other things are a resistor. This one here is 8K. This resistor here, which is 8.1K. And then the B plus line actually runs off over here, down here, around the board, down here over to the horizontal hold control, which is right here. So this right here has continuity to B plus. I know you can't see the multimeter, but that does. But then this side of the potentiometer here this is definitely not shorted to ground. We're getting 2K, uh, both of these legs of the potentiometer. So it's not coming from the pot there. So literally the only thing left are these two caps and caps block DC, which is what my multimeter is testing with. So it should not be shorted to ground through one of those caps. So I need to lift the legs of those caps and uh, take a look. I mean, it's possible that electrolytic caps can can fail short, that is actually possible. Not to mention this electrolytic here, C511, actually had that brown gunk all over it. So maybe that's caused a failure where it's now short. I'm heating it up and then I'm lifting it out with my finger on the other side. Okay, it fell out. Here it is, here's that cap, it's a, the Daewoo cap. Now, none of that brown gunk was actually on the underside and, ooh, you know what, look at that, is that, is that electrolyte there? Has this leaked? All right, I found a bag of brand new 470 microfarad caps, 25 volts. Let's just put this one on the tester, the one I just took out of the monitor. And there we are, 0 0.074 ohms. Shows up as a resistor, not as a capacitor. And here's one of these brand new Rubicons, 25 volts, 470 microfarad. Don't need this anymore. We can just stick it right into the slot there. This is 413 microfarad at one kilohertz. We can actually change the frequency down to like 100 hertz because it's closer to DC. And there we are, 428 microfarads. And the D value is 0.092. So that is correct. So into the board it goes. Just bend the leads. And it is marked correctly with a silk screen, but I already know which is the positive side. And which is the negative because I've been testing the B plus there. And then we are going to solder this in and I have to reconnect that IC. I just, it's already back in there. I just haven't soldered it in yet. All right, the IC is back in, the cap is back in. I am on the ground lead right there. And if we go to B plus now, there we go. We're in the kilo ohms and the IC pin that was showing as shorted 
same thing. It briefly showed like 400 ohms and right away it's up in the kilo ohms. It is no longer shorted. All right, so at this point, I don't even wanna to try to power this on because I'm afraid this might actually work at this point. And I don't wanna generate high voltage. I don't even have the high voltage connected to the CRT. So let me reassemble this to a, a state where it's at least safe to power on and generate the, uh, what, 14,000 volts that says it can generate here. Okay, things are sort of back together. I did reconnect the video wire, the one that was broken on both ends. So that's good to go. The test bench is on. The power supply is connected. And I think I'm ready to turn this on. We're gonna run it off the bench supply again with 15 volts. And here we go. All right, it was drawing one amp and it was actually current limiting a little bit. So I'm gonna ramp up the current to 1.5 amps and here we go again. I'm pretty sure high voltage is working. Oh, and there, ladies and gentlemen, is an image. <laughs> it's working. I gotta turn this a little bit more. Make sure nothing shorts here. It's all a little precarious. There it is. It's working. It's freaking working. Now I do have to say, I think this CRT is pretty spent. I have brightness and contrast maxed out and it's a little bit blurry. There is an image, but that's, that's what it takes to get a bright picture. So I think this monitor is gonna require a CRT swap as well. I'm just quickly running through the various resolutions with Check It here, just to make sure that the monitor is actually working fully uh, through the EGA, VGA, and text mode resolutions. Definitely appears to be working just fine, other than the very, very dim monitor. And there is Planet X3 on a nice monochrome display. And I have to say the phosphor on this CRT pretty pleasing actually. It's very much uh, a yellowish white as opposed to what's on Macintosh CRTs, very bluish white. This definitely has a more yellow, softer color to your eye. But unfortunately, like I said, maxed out, it's just not that bright. Although maybe before I swap this, maybe this is a good candidate to try some CRT rejuvenation. So the original power supply is connected along with the power switch to the front. This is all just sort of sitting here. I don't want to screw anything back together because if I do have to take this CRT out, it all has to come out anyways. So I might as well just test it as is like this before I do any further assembly. Okay, I have the mains AC cord right here. The monitor is turned off. So I'm gonna plug this in here. Okay, here we go. Sounds like high voltage is running everyone. We have an image. So this power supply is working perfectly. It appears so far, the only fault is this shorted electrolytic capacitor. All right, the monitor is repositioned. I'm just gonna power back on. Incidentally, on the kilowatt, it uses 19 watts when it is operating normally, at least this particular monitor. Certainly takes a little while to warm up. I'm just gonna load up Planet X3 and I'm just gonna leave this at the splash screen right here and I'm gonna turn the brightness up, the contrast up. The CRT probably hasn't been used in this thing for a long time. So maybe over time it will brighten up. So I'm just gonna leave this run for maybe 30 or 40 minutes. It's been about an hour since I first powered this thing up and as you can see, the monitor is still working fine. It's a little bit brighter than it was, but it's still pretty dim. So that really calls for this, the old CRT rejuvenator and tester. If it actually makes it worse, it's not the end of the world, this thing's pretty dim. Maybe it'll make it brighter. I've had some success in the past with monochrome CRTs, so might as well give it a try. Filament voltage should be 12 volts. Let's check for shorts, no shorts. Of course, we know there's no shorts because it was working. Now I'm trying to set the cutoff, which uh, should show up on this meter here because it's green is all it's connected. And I gotta say, it's pretty much no cutoff. If I turn this all the way up, just barely off zero. So that's not great. So emissions test, not looking so great. It's pretty low there. So keep note that it's around 0 0.5 right now on emissions. So let's try to rejuvenate. I'll set this to 25 milliamps and let's push the rejuvenate start button. All right, there we go, completed. So it's getting closer to one, it's certainly a lot better than it was on 0 0.5. I think at this point, I'm gonna plug the monitor back in and we'll just see if this improved it at all. It certainly looks like it's a little bit better. 
Well, post rejuvenation, there's actually a marked improvement in the overall picture quality on this CRT. I'm gonna say that rejuvenation really turned this in to quite a usable little screen. So I think with that, I'm gonna reassemble this monitor. And we're done. The IBM monitor came together. I didn't even have any extra screws in the end. And there are a lot of screws that hold together this overbuilt, complicated monitor. But it's really cool that this thing is now working properly. And I think even after rejuvenation, the CRT is a little worn out. So probably will need to be swapped with one from a Macintosh, which should hopefully work perfectly and be a lot brighter than the one that's in here. I have a real fondness for small monitors, but then also these types of monochrome or grayscale monitors like this. They're not great if you're trying to play games because sometimes colors just don't show up since this is only displaying what is sent over the green signal from the VGA card. But nonetheless, the compact form factor of these monitors is just so cool. Plus the really warm white glow that this particular CRT offers is just really pleasing. I hope you enjoyed the troubleshooting session I did with this monitor and it's the first time I've ever come across a short electrolytic cap, so I guess I'm gonna add it to my list of things to suspect next time I find a short circuit on a piece of equipment. It's not just caps going open or losing their ability to be a capacitor that happens with old equipment. You can have shorts as well, apparently. And finally, I'd like to wish you and all my viewers a happy holidays and a happy new year. It's been an interesting 2021 and let's look forward to things improving even more in 2022, even though we certainly have some uncertainty on the horizon. And as usual for the YouTube stuff, I wanna thank all my patrons. Their names are scrolling up the side of the screen. Thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the second channel. Comment down below. And I think that is gonna be it. So stay healthy, stay safe. Happy holidays, happy new year, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.